so I figure I better talk about this one before E3 2018, because something tells me that once Smash Switch comes along, there's going to be absolutely nothing worthwhile to talk about in Smash Wars, since Smash Switch is probably going to be a half-sequel and borrow majority from this game. So it makes me think, what's gonna make it stand out from the rest if that happens, you know? Smash 64 has nostalgia, Melee was a phenomenon, Broad Subspace Emissary, Floaty Physics, and Tripping for people to bitch about. And then that leaves Smash 4. What's its legacy? Uh, Smash Tour? <laughs> yeah, okay. But the way I look at it, let's give one good final hurrah for Smash 4 by talking about the good to great things it introduced, with a couple things that I hope to see improved in the future. First off, its range of newcomers in my opinion were the best that we have ever gotten thus far. Even before counting DLC, this was a great group of newcomers. Duck Hut, Palutena, Rosalina, Robin. Hell, despite how unnecessary they might have been, Dr. Mario, Dark Pit, and Lucina were nice little extras too. In fact, Lucina became my main this time around, replacing Donkey Kong who filled that spot three games in a row. Definitely made me appreciate the Marf moveset a lot more. And speaking of extra content, Smash finally embraced DLC. Now, some may have hated it, and to be fair, they could have made the DLC a little cheaper, but I'm so glad this was a thing. This was one of the few aspects of Smash 4 that made us stand out from the rest at the time for sure. Simply because the speculation and hopes for stages and characters wouldn't die anymore once the game came out. To me, it keeps the excitement at 100% long afterwards, and you know just as well as I do. The hype is at its highest during development periods, and DLC is just ongoing development. Another pretty awesome addition was the ability to play 8 players, and oh my god, it is this mode Chaos Incarnate. Not only do I lose track of where I am, but holy hell, I always seem to get the shit kicked out of me when there's 8 players. But, when it's possible to get 7 other players to play, man, it's exhilarating and a blast. I've only got to do this once, but fuck me, that's an experience I'll never forget. The last big addition that unfortunately didn't see much use were the custom moves. I loved the concept, but I hated how it was executed, because in the end they felt gimmicky since you could never use them outside of local matches or with friends online only. I get why they didn't make it available for online matches, it would have been hell to keep track of any exploits these moves could have made, but something this big of an addition shouldn't have went under the radar. I think what the team should have done was do alternate movesets instead of custom moves, like take Palutena for example, the poster girl of custom moves. Most will agree her default moveset sucked the big fat one, but her custom moves on the other hand were considered pretty good, or at least better than her defaults. So to me, why didn't they just make them a fixed alternate moveset? That way it could possibly be kept in check and balanced okay, and it'd give a bit more variety for characters without making the moves pointless. Hell, I'm hoping Breath of the Wild Link is an indicator of this idea, cause that'd be sweet to pick either his new moveset or older moveset and not make them separate characters. But in the end, I guess as long as his original moveset isn't cut entirely, I guess it just doesn't really matter in the end, so it's not that big of a deal if it doesn't happen. Now, I'm not a competitive player by any means. Pros watching my gameplay are probably cringing like hell, but another benefit of now being in the world of updates, there were now balancing patches this time around. No more broken fucking characters. Woo hoo hoo hoo! Oh my god! Which, thank Christ, since 4 embraced the online element much more. Still, obviously, it's not as good as it should be, but hey, it's better than nothing, I guess. Plus, I doubt you can do much worse than Brawl's laughable attempt. Unfortunately, this transition to being more about online also felt like it was at a cost at its single player content. And hey, for some, it wasn't a big deal. But for me who enjoyed stuff like Adventure Mode and Subspace Emissary, especially since my internet connection is pretty trash sometimes, this kind of led to Smash 4 being my least played game in the series. Now, I can't say there was nothing to do. I mean, sure, there was trophies to collect, classic and all-stars to complete, and, um... This fucking thing? Ugh. But that stuff got pretty repetitive really quickly. 58 characters doing the same thing over and over? Definitely not as much variety, and for me, the thing that hammered that repetitive feeling was the lack of unlockables. Now, obviously, there are unlockable characters and stages, but this time around, the number was lowered quite a bit. Again, for some, this was a good thing as they prefer having most or all characters and stages up front, but for me, that was one of my favorite parts about Melee, and to an extent, Brawl. Not only did you have to figure out how to unlock the characters, but there was more of a mystery of who was actually in it. Of course, with social media nowadays, those days are long gone. Shit, if you're a Smash fan, your eyes and ears are gonna be glued to any announcement and leaks, so that mystery won't ever be there again. Unless you plan on staying off the internet for Smash development periods, and you definitely ain't ever gonna be doing that. But if I could ask for anything in future titles, it would be don't let the single player element suffer again. But honestly, those are minor complaints, and for some it's more nitpicking than anything else. And even I admit, the lack of single player modes is not a big deal in the grand scheme of things, cause Smash 4 was a great experience for both versions. Sure, Smash Switch may end up stealing a lot of its identity, but if they're using this game as a base and nothing ends up getting cut, then oh man, we're in for some good people. But nonetheless, Smash for Wii U and 3DS were some of the best games for their respective systems, and you'll never be able to take that away from them. You may very well become the forgotten game in this series, but your contributions will always be appreciated.